Now, when people design algorithms for problems like this, what they do is they study the problem itself, and their goal is to try to expose some property of, the, of this problem or some structure that is related to the problem so that you can design an algorithm that exploits that property. That is a very classic way of approaching algorithm design and it's pretty much par for the course. So oftentimes people tell you, hey look, I just, do, I just go to my computer and I code something up. That is not how algorithm design normally goes. Uh, normally that is the last thing you do as a computer scientist. Normally what you do is you study the problem, you try to extract some structure or some property that that problem might have, and beyond that, your goal is to try to exploit properties of that problem. So that's kind of the classic way of studying a problem in computing. So that's what a lot of people like me do, that's a lot of People that do algorithm design, that's very much par for the course. So, we've got to talk a little bit about the minimum spanning tree problem first before we can talk about algorithms. So, my caution to the wind is that computer scientists normally don't just dive right into a problem and just start throwing things at that. That, that is irresponsible because you could potentially design an algorithm that could, could quite likely uh, be incorrect because maybe, like, now, now I shouldn't be, I should be very clear here. You could go head first and design something that is correct, and that's great, but computer scientists have to be more careful because when you posit a solution to a problem, an algorithm, your job is to demonstrate that that thing is indeed correct. So if you fail at that, somebody could pick up your algorithm, put it into an application like on a computer, or institute it as a policy or a procedure, say even at a government level, and it could potentially kill people. I, 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 I'm not joking. So it could be a government, it could be a company. There's ethics issues surrounding the fact that if you know willingly that an algorithm just doesn't work, you shouldn't publish it or uh, treat it like so. So you should be very careful when you make claims about giving you an algorithm and showing that it's correct, okay? That's the big thing I want you to take away from this. So you have a responsibility not to just design things ad hoc and hope that they work and just throw it into an actual application and hope that people don't mind if it affects other people's lives. So that's your responsibility as a scientist not to do things like that. That's at least my opinion on it. You may disagree with me. Um, I don't really usually like to talk about my opinions, but it's very important that you understand that as a computer scientist, you're, you're not just simply just throwing things out of a toolbox at things. Your job is not just to do that. Your job is to show that things are actually correct and we're actually studying the problems, not just cooking up things and just throwing them at the screen. Now, that is what a practitioner does. That is not the same thing as being a computer scientist. For your scientist, you have a responsibility. If you give somebody an algorithm, your job is to demonstrate its effectiveness. That is the burden on you. Okay, so end of rant. <laughs> I don't normally like to talk about these things, but in these days I feel the necessity to bring up that kind of topic because I find oftentimes people throw technology at things and not understand the consequences of them, especially when they don't understand the procedures themselves may be potentially questionable, ineffective, or potentially create incorrect answers. So. This should be in contrast, uh, so that's kind of like I talked about earlier on in the course, there's kind of two different ways you can think about problem solving. You can think about it in this exact pure way that a lot of classic computer scientists would, or you can think of a more of an empirical approach where you might give an algorithm and it may not necessarily be correct, but sometimes it might be right. Um, so in one end, we're on this end where we're trying to show that it works. On this other end, your job is to then design a good computer experiment to show its effectiveness. So, 
point I'm saying is that there's a burden on the person presenting the algorithm to give you some form of evidence that this thing works. I don't normally like to talk about that, but I feel it is uh, it, very important to talk about these that these days as people ever growingly adopt computational solutions to things, not understanding or potentially uh, misunderstanding the consequences of using such tools.